people are pointing out that now that you're in the you painted those walls recently, right? Yeah. Okay. If you're looking on your screen, people are noticing that my wall and your wall are the same color. Oh. So it's kind of making this even transition across the split screen. We planned it that way, actually. We, we did. We 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 collaborated on this. When I bought the house, we were like, okay, what are we gonna do our showroom colors in? Because they got to match. We got to. We we, we got like, to work. Totes. Yeah. Yeah, totes. Would help if I get the stories off of your screen gap. That would be better. Good. Yay. Okay, so well it's it's that time we've got a collection this holy god it's been, our last story this week is just a fiasco from start Ooh. to finish which is is quite impressive a lupe um, fiasco no no that would be entertaining this is just sad oh um but we have many and sundry things to go in the middle um <laughs> Holy shit. So let's get our intro ready. Oh, uh, where is it? Where are you? Where are you? Where am I? Here we go. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong with you? Crazy. And I'm going to start with a question, Sarah. Yes. Um, so just a, a, a word association thing. What's the first thing you think of when you hear Boston Marathon? Bombing, unfortunately. Yes. Currently, because of that tragic event. That's the first thing you associate mentally with the Boston Marathon. Yeah. It's very fresh in everyone's mind. It's very recent. It only happened four years ago. So yeah. it, it's it's kind wow, of... Wow, it's been four years? I guess it has. Yeah. Unfortunately, Adidas did not get the goddamn memo. Man, it is just like bad PR all the fuck over the place. Adidas, Adidas apologizes after no. sending you survived email to Boston Marathon finishers. Really? Some finishers of Monday's race have taken issue with a congratulatory email sent by Adidas, the sponsor of the 121st annual race. Quote, congrats, you survived the Boston Marathon an email sent by Adidas to 2017 Boston Marathon finishers on Tuesday read. Yeah, not, not cool. Congratulations, you didn't blow up. And I'm sure they meant it as, congratulations, you got through the race and your nipples are probably bleeding now because that's the thing that happens when you run 26 miles. How did nipples come into this? It's it's a thing that happens when you do a lot of running, and I don't understand why people run for pleasure, but whatever. See, I'm sure they didn't mean it that way. Like, you know, you joke, like, oh, congratulations, you survived Christmas with your family. Yeah. But, but you know... when last Christmas your Uncle Bernard shot three people, you right. maybe don't say that. You maybe don't say that. You may be done. What is it with these big companies? Just. It's like year of bad PR, dude. It's, it's like. It's like completely tone deaf. Yeah. Every step of the fucking way. How do they keep doing this? I wonder if anyone here or Nash or Tara will ever run a marathon. I will fucking not. No. No. One, because I'm fat and lazy. Two, because I'm 40, but my knees are 80. Because I have hereditary bad knees, and I did 15 years of baton twirling to exacerbate it. So no, I never run no fucking marathon. No, I, and I'm just lazy. If I'm also running, bad. if you ever run into me and I'm running, you should run too, because Godzilla's behind me. I'll fucking run. And if I do, it's because there's a xenomorph 
or Godzilla or something fucking terrible right behind me. So you should run too. Or Chris Evans is the direction you're running toward. Yes. Yeah, that would, yeah. That would. Um, oh, I meant to start with this one. This, this is just a quick brief one. I'm, I'm just going to show it and we'll move on. I wanted to, to point out that when we do this show, I actually do a lot of research. Like, I'm not talking like I crack open the books and there's a montage with. with no, but you do a lot of verification. Books. Right. I have more to... than some actual media. And that's that's the point I'm raising, because, um, well, this popped up on a uh, uh, less than reputable news site. Um, a lot of what they call what we, aggregators, repackagers, they just take a story and, and yeah. post it and go and they don't actually do the work themselves. Well, um, the headline was second doctor arrested in U.S. female uh, genital, genital mutilation case. Awful story, awful thing. And they did not do very much work when it came to grabbing a picture to use with this story. And and let's see, let's oh, no. see how many people out there are can f- figure out what's wrong with this. With this here, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they just Googled second doctor, didn't they? They just Googled second doctor. Like, I, I don't know who that is, but I could guess that it's probably the second doctor. Yep. Patrick Troughton. Unless he's mutilating women's genitals with a sonic screwdriver. No, no, he never, he, he did, he did not do that. Which would also be awful. Also, he's been dead for three decades, which would be really impressive. But also awful. Awful and impressive. But, uh... Like, I think we just wrote a horror movie. <sighs> For fuck's sake. Do it. Just base, basic due diligence. like 10 minutes of research. Basic <laughs> due diligence. Jesus Christ. All right. Next up. <sighs> this is truly one of the quintessential American stories, I have to say. Oh, God. Not like the grand history and legacy and what America excels to be, but... There's quintessential American stories and quintessential America stories. I guess and this would... Like you mean the latter. Yeah, yeah. Um, comes to us from South Dakota. Man arrested trying to save beer from Blaze. South Dakota man was arrested yesterday afternoon after he pushed past police and firefighters so he could save his beer inside an apartment building that was aflame. (laughs) You know, there's more beer. Michael Castile, 56. We're not rationing. Was collared outside his home, a multifamily residence in Sioux Falls. Mercy workers were treating other building residents for injuries. Castile, cops say, persisted in trying to re-enter the building to retrieve beer from his apartment. And it I gets think worse. I just something you might not have noticed. Huh. Sioux Falls, South Dakota is where the character Bobby Singer lives on Supernatural. Yeah, yeah. So the humor of someone named Castile ah. running to save their beer in Sioux Falls well, it gets, this kind of gets I worse. I feel like Dean sent him in there. Well, it kind of gets worse. Castile succeeded in returning to his home where he grabbed two cans of Bud Ice Premium. Shut the fuck up. That's not beer. You save two cans of urine. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's like the old joke. Uh, why is American beer like uh, sex in a boat. Because you'll get nauseous? Because it's fucking close to water. Oh, <laughs> that's better than mine. Yeah, uh, it's... Like, Dan makes his own beer, so he he would be stupid if he did that to save his own beer. It's, my God. Let alone Bud Ice, dude. It's, I could... There are some craft brews I have had in my life. I would, I would not, but I would consider running into <laughs> a burning building. I would consider for just two cans of it. 
I would even maybe for I, half, yeah, for half a second, maybe I would even go, wait a minute, did I leave my blue moon in there? I might do that. But you can get more. You can get, that's the thing. Did I leave my blue moon in there? There's a store down the street and Bud Ice Premium. My we God. We haven't run out. No, there's not a shortage. There's, there's an abundance of that shitty piss water. Wow. wow. And of course, he went to he went to jail for this. Um, he Where is, there is no Bud Ice. He is booked into, uh, I, I, I can't be saying this right. I already know. Into Minnehaha County Jail. That's, that's not, I, that, I'm, Minnehaha <laughs> County Jail, where he's locked up in lieu of $300 bond. Where goes your beer money? Three hundred dollars over two. You fucking idiot! <laughs> Hang um, on, man. My Zima's in there. This next story is one where, uh, <laughs> holy moly, it's one of those things where you are doing way too much work to avoid doing the work you need to do. Mm. And in this case, oh boy. All right, uh, let's get to it. To avoid trip with girlfriend, travel agent sent hijack threat to airports. Wow. Okay. The Hyderabad police on Thursday arrested a travel agent who sent an email five days ago to the Mumbai police about possible hijacking attempts. Though it was mentioned the email sender was a woman, the person turned out to be M. Vamshi Krishna, a man. Quote, he promised his girlfriend living in Chennai that he would take her on a jolly trip to Mumbai by flight, but had no money to book the ticket. While chatting online, he tried to convince her to cancel the trip, but she didn't pay heed to his request. Unable to explain to his girlfriend he had no money for the trip, Vamshi decided to create a situation so that flights are canceled. Do you not have to buy tickets in advance in India? Well, what he it gets even better. Vamshi created a fake ticket in his girlfriend's oh. name from Chennai to Mumbai and mailed it to her. A day before the scheduled journey, he went to an internet cafe and created a fake email ID and mailed the Mumbai police commissioner. Buddy, buddy, what, what are you doing? Like, I'm really sorry you can't admit to your girlfriend that you're poor or just don't have cash on hand. I don't know your life. Yeah. But that's not a really good excuse for no. fucking up travel for hundreds of people and creating a giant terrorism scare. World's a little on edge right now. A little bit. I'm, I, 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 apologies to Dr. Nerdlove here. I'm going to step on his milieu and drag him a bit into, into this. But um, if your girlfriend is not going to be your girlfriend because of your monetary situation... Fine. She's a girlfriend. That's that's not yeah. yeah. You, you should not be in that situation. And if you feel you cannot be honest with your and not just girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, significant other in general, if you feel you cannot be honest with your significant other about a situation, and instead feel your best solution is an elaborate <laughs> madcap scheme, is a fake terrorist threat. You're not in a good relationship. No, your relationship might have some issues. A little bit, just a few, maybe. I, cause, my friend, what if what have you done? This is not the best solution. You're going to jail, and I promise you, she ain't waiting. Mm -mm. She's probably very angry right now. Yes. With good reason. I mean, I yes. don't, I, I don't know her. I don't know, you know, if she's the kind of person who would be pissed off because of his money or whatnot. But I do know she has every reason to be pissed off because, number one, you lied to her. And number two, to facilitate this, you created a terrorist threat. 
like conversely if your boyfriend creates a fake terrorist threat to avoid telling you he can't avoid some afford something dump that motherfucking asshole yeah that, that that's not exactly a long-term prospect that's not someone you want to be married to this is not a meet cute this is not this shit would work maybe in a zach galifianakis movie but this is the really real world, and that shit's creepy. Actually, in the movies, that shit's creepy, too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, but it would work. It would work. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh. Now let's talk about boobs. Okay. <laughs> I didn't have a good segue there, so I just dove right in. You know, do you really need a good segue to talk about boobs? I feel like you don't. Well, here's... All right, there is a common stereotype that women will quite often use their their bras as pockets. Yeah. I don't I know women that do that and I don't get it. Oh, you're really not going to get this. Cuz things slide around in there and they come out sweaty and disgusting. And if you've worked retail and had to take money out of someone's bra, you know what I mean, and it's gross. This is this is going to impress you then. Um, ISIS prison guard sentenced for smuggling thousands of pounds. That's in pounds is in dollars, not pounds is in weight of uh, worth of goods in bra. Wow. Safat Boskert smuggled three phones, 18 SIM cards, a USB stick, and five charging wires into the prison, uh, rather unfortunately named HM Prison ISIS, uh, a young offender's institutional in uh, Thamesmead. All at once? Or like over a period of time? At once, that would be amazing. Yeah. However, it was the five ounces of cannabis hidden in her waistband that alerted the sniffer dogs to her plot. Uh, she was paid 1,000 pounds each time she smuggled something into uh, by an offender. Uh, the court heard that Boskert was trying to pay off uh, 32,000 uh, euros, or that's pounds, uh, on her that's credit pounds. card and was being paid by a former inmate, inmate named Luke Powell. Um, so, yeah. This, that's. I mean, as smuggling shit into prison goes, stuffing it in your bra is one of the less stupid ways. Well, it is better than up your butt. Let's yes. be, let's, it's, it's way better than up your butt. Yeah. Much easier to remove. But, but if you're a prison guard, and then you're, maybe, maybe not the illegal drugs. And, and the other thing is, you're fucking it up. Because I, women do stuff stuff into their bra. Well, now you're fucking it up for women, because now when they go into prisons, they're going to have to take off their goddamn bras, or because, get yeah, or, or get the goo 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 goo. What the, Because you which happens at the airport sometimes. Oh, that is so creepy. It used to be like the the technology's improved, but it used to be you had to know not to wear an underwire bra when you were going to fly. Or beep, 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 Because that beep, would set beep. off the metal detector. And then you'd have to get wanded and they'd sit there wanding your boobs. The technology's gotten better. Thank God. Uh, computer owned it. Well, now we know Victoria's Secret. <laughs> yeah, she's going to jail. That's why those bras are so fucking expensive. Because <laughs> they're USB capable. I mean, you, you don't, don't do this. Why aren't bras USB capable? That would be so much more convenient if I could just plug my phone into my bra. They, they, they Tara, they make those. Really? I need them. I know they make ones that hold. I know I've seen the bra that will add two cup sizes because you fill it with wine and then there's a straw. And the thing that always cracks me up about that is how do you explain to people that as you get drunker, your tits get smaller? because <laughs> it's going to be notable <laughs> oh. I just didn't think that through I feel like oh. who's chirping is that Peggy 
I hear a kitty chirping. They don't want to come in here today. Peggy was in here jumping around, climbing on everything, and now she's not interested. The next one comes from China, and I have seen, we, ha we have on this show seen many different ways to try to beat a breathalyzer. From yeah. outright refusal to weird plots and ploys. This guy, uh, this is a first. And, okay. Drunk driver tries to beat breathalyzer tests by eating grass on roadside. Huh. After encountering a police checkpoint late on Monday night, one drunk driver came up with a creative way to get out of failing a breathalyzer test. Less than 100 meters away from the checkpoint, the man fled his black Mercedes and began stumbling up a roadside hill before slipping and tumbling back down. It was there the police caught up with him, noticing he stank of alcohol. They asked him to take a breathalyzer test, despite the fact he kept insisting, quote, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't driving. All right, now first off, those are two lies. Yeah. Because you were in the car and you were and drunk. And you're acting like an idiot. I mean, I guess you could act like an idiot sober. Plenty of people do. But then, with no other options, the man sat down on the roadside and began eating grass by the handful. Oh, we have some animated GIFs. Let's yeah. look at those. Um, we kept trying to tell him, stop eating, but he didn't listen. He kept pulling up clumps of grass and stuffing them in his mouth, police told reporters. Some of it he probably ate, some of it he spit out. Altogether, he probably did that 20 times. There was a patch of grass in the ditch, and by the time he is done, he pulled it all up. Um, think about all the animals that are shit in that grass. Uh... The officers assumed he was eating the grass in an attempt to sober up. Oh, there is an old saying that an Irishman is never drunk so long as he can hold on to a blade of grass to keep from falling off the earth. <laughs> but that doesn't work if you rip it out of the ground. So you're just going to tumble off into space. <laughs> so you fucked it up. That's just science. That's right. just science right there. I mean, everybody knows that. I just... <laughs> that is a long saying. The Irish are a verbose people. I just imagine this guy thinking, I got this is a perfect plan. This is going to work. I'm going like, to free. Like parsley will freshen your breath if you chew on it? I have not heard that about grass and roadside ditches. But it will freshen. Nor would I want to try. It will freshen your breath, but it won't make those microscopic chemical components of alcohol disappear from no, your head. It'll say, just oh, add fun and exciting new bacteria to your system. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that shit's not clean. That's, and and the, poli and the other thing is the police are saying you do this. It's yeah. a little suspicious. A little bit. That's not something people normally do. No, man, I'm just really into being a vegan. <laughs> Who's back there? I hear some king. Oh, hi, Dottie. Oh, I'm sorry. I scared you away. Dottie came bopping in, and then I moved the thing, and she's gone. Oh, our last one comes from Arkansas, and this, this is a saga. An amazing saga. You remember a while back we had those uh, prank calls where people would call stores and tell them to they were the fire department and to break yes, all the windows. to yeah. break all the windows, yeah. And we thought, well, you got to be really stupid to fall for that. This, however... Psychologically, no. People tend to respond to authority. Well, Dan then, would explain it to you if he was in the room. Then this is some absolutely scary psychological shit right here. I, I this is This is kind of making me afraid. Benton Taco Bell loses thousands after scam phone call. Oh, no. Benton, Arkansas. Local Taco Bell was robbed of thousands of dollars Tuesday after employees fell victim to a scam phone call. April 18th, police were called to the Taco Bell in reference to a robbery. Police talked with an employee, uh, Tamikia, 
who said around 6.15 p.m. she got a call from the restaurant's phone from a woman who said her name was Pamela Miller and she was the vice president of Taco Bell. Okay. Miller told Tamikia not to tell anyone she was on the phone. Miller went on to say the manager of the restaurant was going to be arrested by the U.S. Marshal Service within the hour. Tamikia was told she was being watched on security cameras, and she told anyone about the coming arrest, she would be arrested as an accomplice. Pause. Um, if the vice president of Taco Bell is calling your store about this shit, that's one of those things I would be like, okay, cool story, bro. Let me get someone with more authority than me. Yeah. Let, let me, let me, in fact, I'm going to hang up. I'm going to call corporate. You, here's what we're going to do. You're going to tell the switchboard to let me through to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to call corporate and tell them I want to connect to you and they're going to let me through. Okay. Just to, because. Uh, but no, it gets better. Miller then ordered Tamikia to take the money from the safe and two of the cash registers and place it into a bank bag. She, she was told to give that bag of money to a trusted employee. Why? What was the rationale? Yeah, what does that have to do with... What, what is that? Like, I feel like if they were going to confiscate all the store money, they would close the store. Yes. Now, there is... I don't know how much retail you've worked. Retail employees, they they so don't want you to fucking think. Mm -mm. They don't want they don't want creative thought. They don't want initiative. They want you to be a good little drone and say the right buzzwords and make your numbers and shut the fuck up. The problem with that is shit like this is very easy because you're so used to just doing what you're fucking told, even when it makes no sense that people from on high will just call and give orders. And now I'm not saying like, I probably wouldn't have done this, but I can't say for sure because when it gets worse, you're fucking programmed to just do it, shit. It gets worse. Tamika gave the money bag to an employee, John, who then talked to Miller about what to do next. After John had been gone for more than an hour, Tamika decided to call her regional manager and tell her what was going on. Sutton said there was no Pamela Miller who worked at the corporate office. I probably would have done that before I put the money in the bags. Sutton came to the store and determined more than $2,800 had been taken. Police were able to track down John and pulled him over. He told police he had already transferred $1,300 to Alabama via Western Union and $1,000 to a lady via MoneyGram at Walmart. Pamela told John to flush the receipts after the transactions were finished. Okay. Yeah. This is a thing that happens in retail, sure. I feel pretty confident that John was in on it. Because that's a bit much. If he was, they got him dead to rights. If he yeah. wasn't. If he wasn't, then John is a huge idiot. Because have you ever... I've like, I can defend Tamikia. I can kind of see how something like that happens. It sounds dumb, but I've worked enough retail that I can see you getting talked into it. John, uh, that's not so much. I mean, yeah, in retail, you're asked to do very standard things, but nowhere in anything I've ever had to do was take legal documents and put them in a toilet. No, they want so much paperwork. Oh, God, yes. They want you to save, like, God forbid somebody makes a return. You better still have that receipt three years from now. I mean, it, it's, I've never, working in most retail, in, in the, you know, the floor level retail. Yeah. There is no, even, you don't even get to decide to shred stuff. No. Much less put it in a toilet. I, I just... Wow. I... I hear a jingly bell. This... I'm trying to get you guys some kitten, but... 
Now, you have to wonder how many Taco Bells she called to try and pull this off. Yeah. Was this like the first one? Because if so, that's embarrassing. Yeah. But there is, there's a, it happened, there was some Burger King. Um, McDonald's, Dan knows what I'm talking about. That like they called and basically had an employee holding the other employees fucking hostage and assaulting them and doing horrible shit because they convinced them they were the cops and this person was stealing. They made a movie about it. It's called Compliance. But like, if they're psychologically, if people believe that you are an authority figure, they will just do what you fucking tell them. Even if it makes no sense, if you can convince them that you're an authority figure, they will do terrible things. It was some, I think it, I, Dan says McDonald's. I have, I feel like it was Burger King, but yeah, like, this shit happens and yeah but there's terrible things and there's absolutely stupid things breaking all the windows with the fire department like that one was just plain stupid like the, the fire department says you should break all the windows no <laughs> take all the store money break standard procedure and guess what there's a toilet union. involved yeah western union it to random ass places and then and money gram Western Union yeah. and MoneyGram because and they flush their receipts. Like, no, that that doesn't seem kosher. It's what you that's can't, not in the handbook. You can't just say no, no. Pamela said it was cool. Yeah, no. Even Eve. All right, let's just for the sake of argument say Pamela. Do a bug. Come here. Really was the vice president of Taco Bell and told you to do all this shit. Even then? She's in some shady shit. Yeah. Do you really want to be an accomplice to whatever requires the vice president of Taco Bell to call your store in fucking Benton, Arkansas yeah. and money gram shit and then flush the receipts? Do you yeah. want to be in the middle of this? I got bad news for you. If her story is true, your vice president's fucking Bernie Madoff. <laughs> Daddy, come up here. Do the bug. Come here, baby. Me, you, you know. No, you. At my worst in this situation, I'd be like, yo, can someone else handle this shit? I'm on my break. <laughs> I'm taking a break now. Anybody else? Bob, can you take the money and flush the rest? I'm going to go take a smoke break. <laughs> yo, yo, man. And that's what, like, that's, that's my default answer. I'm just every trying to get my 20 I, hours this week. Work and I get a question where it sounds the slightest bit shady. I'm like, let me get my manager for you. I, I just want to get my 20 hours this week. I'm just, that's way that's above all. my finger. That's all, man. Like, this is past warranty by one day. Can you just honor it? Let me get my manager for you. I'm not going to answer that. And not that, on me. And I don't that, make enough money for that shit to be on me. And that doesn't even involve a toilet. No. So I, I guess the first thing we learned this week is um, if uh, someone in authority asks you to do something with a toilet and you're not in sanitation. You or might, you don't really have to pee and have asked for a bathroom break. Yeah, yeah. You, you might want to rethink yeah. what, what you're being told. Because Pretty much corporate will never ask you to flush corp financial paperwork down the toilet. Pretty that's much? probably not a thing that's going to happen. Pretty much? That's a never. You can probably assume that that's not going to happen. The minute you're flushing shit down a toilet, official documents down a toilet, that's everyone's going to jail. Everyone. You've made a bad career choice. FYI. We've learned that um, for quick sobering, grass is not an effective remedy. No. Um, and we're not even talking about marijuana. We're just talking about regular old... <laughs> that's not going to work either. No, that's, that's not going to help. That is definitely not going to sober you the fuck up. Or help with your breathalyzer. We've learned um, that uh, the next time you get your bra search going into a federal building, you know who to blame. Um, Some people got to fuck it up for everyone. We've learned if you cannot be honest with your significant other, they probably shouldn't be your significant other. You should probably rethink that relationship. And not resort to an elaborate plot involving threats of terrorism. No. 
don't do that. That's not going to be a story you tell your grandkids. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, we've learned you can get more beer. Yes. <laughs> there is not, in fact, a bud shortage. No. Budweiser's doing fine. You can get more fucking beer. And you know what? Your bail costs more than those two beers would buy a lot. You know how much beer you could have bought with that $300? You could have bought a lot of shitty beer with that. Yeah, you could have pretty much $300. You go into any grocery store and be like, I'm going to take all the shitty beer. They're, they'll be like, okay. All right. $300 pretty much do it. Um, And finally, we've learned that corporations, they might be people, but they're kind of stupid people. Yeah. Like, You survived the Boston Marathon. Congratulations. Like, come on. Fucking Google. 